and I'm just gonna mix it and hope for the best. It absolutely lived up to that hype. We, we didn't know it was a thing until so, yesterday. So, one of the seven wonders of the world. We just had the Meritozo from Bar San Calistro, which is was featured on Stanley 2G's Searching for Italy. You had to ask for it. We walked in and we're like, oh, I don't see them. They had to make them. Uh, they just grab the buns and then add the whipped cream. Um, and I don't know if you could tell in the pictures, I didn't realize this from what I'd heard about it, is that the bun is iced. Yes. Um, and that sugar is what makes it so good. Um, it's really good. Good way to start the day. Yeah, we're about to leave Trastevere for the first time since we really got here and head over the Tiber. I've heard that lifelong Trastevereans will take pride in the fact that they've never crossed the river into the other side so we're about to break that. <laughs> made it to the cat sanctuary. It is basically a cat safari. You just walk around the site and try to spot the kitties. Oh, and if you do come here, there are signs posted everywhere. Do not feed the cats. Um, I guess that encourages them to leave the sanctuary and we want to keep them in the, in the sanctuary. finished our tour of the Colosseum. It was about a three and a half three hour tour. I think a lot of things were different today for us because there were some restoration projects that were taking place. They even, there's, there's even like a huge soccer game tonight uh, that, and I guess they have a chance to win the Europe the European Cup and I don't know it's a big deal and uh, they said that, the, that even that game has affected some of the operations yeah. for the tours at the Coliseum like we even ended up which I think is we talked about how surprising it was that we actually started in the Roman Forum about an hour and a half in the Roman Forum. One thing I found fascinating about the Forum, because there's so much history here, our tour guide called it lasagna, because there's so many different layers of history to each structure, everything you look at, because something that may have originally been built as a temple to a pagan god, or to built for a Caesar, um, Centuries later that structure got repurposed as a church. What was great was our tour guide. She uh, She definitely had been around the block a few times I think she said she'd been doing it for like 16 years or I mean she it was impressive like what all um, Like degrees and master's degree that she had but anyway she related a lot of stuff to movies and especially gladiator yes. So honestly highly recommend watching gladiator before you come if you've never seen it. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Yeah, she she related everything back to the Gladiator, uh, even Troy, Troy Indiana yeah. Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the seven wonders of the world, the Colosseum.
afterwards we we uh, did about a 10 minute ish walk um, south east of the Coliseum um, and on our way we stopped actually the total walk here is about 20 minutes about halfway through we stopped to eat at this little cafe it's called restore restore cafe restore cafe vecchia yeah and it seemed to be this uh, like mom and pop i swear literally I'm pretty sure literally like, it was a husband and wife it looked yeah, like yeah and there's maybe like there's like three tables inside and some maybe tables four outside or five outside and he the man was so nice he was so sweet i actually have um his card so i'll definitely like we'll take a picture of it or link it or something but um but yeah we kind of just stumbled upon it and we'd always heard just to try to stay away from like right in the tourist areas like don't eat it not not that the food wouldn't be fine but it's just it's also more expensive yeah. kind of like even in the u.s when you go tourist places are more expensive so we tried to just kind of walk and found this little place and yeah I got some pizza and it was delicious and yes and uh, I felt bad for Lauren because I tried her pizza she had to cut it herself but oh yeah I felt bad for her because what I had I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce it but I do know it was really good inside was ricotta and spinach and the tomato sauce on top I took Lauren's crust and sopped up all the tomato sauce I could because it was so good yeah. and fun fact we learned on our food tour yesterday I don't know if we mentioned it um, our, our tour yesterday was telling us that if you're in Italy and you want to compliment the chef yes. there is the the well-known chef's, chef's kiss but you can also do this which and we we didn't know was a thing until so yesterday so. when we were at the restaurant every time I saw the the owners uh, I would I would do this yeah and they and would always smile it, and laugh yes, and I got yes. the, they, they they know that we just learned that and that's yes, the only that's, way we can communicate yeah. to tell them how good we thought yeah. it was so, but I think they appreciated it for sure yeah. so um, behind us you may have noticed there's a beautiful building behind us and it's not just a building it is the first Basilica in Rome or uh, it is st. Peter's was actually the second st. Peter's being the largest um, it is San, I'm gonna get this wrong. It, it, I know it, it's the Archbasilica of St. John. And if you look on Google Maps, if you're trying to find it, it's Basilica di San Giovanni in Laterano. Um, the church was originally dedicated to Christ and then it was then dedicated to John the Baptist and John the Apostle. Um, so, uh, we are gonna go check this place out. It's about, again, about a 20 minute walk southeast of the Colosseum. So we are um, knocking out as much on the south side of Rome as we can. So we ventured down here as our next stop. It is the oldest public church in Rome and the oldest basilica in the Western world. And it was absolutely gorgeous just even before you step foot in the building and then you go inside and there's statues of the apostles it is one of the self seven pilgrimage churches here in rome the Beautiful only thing church the only thing i'll add to this is that when we walked in all i could think about was we're actually going to go to saint peter's tomorrow hopefully and uh, all i could think about was wow this church is big how big is saint peter's really going to be yeah. like i just can't even I can't even imagine. It, so. it got us really excited yeah. uh, to go to the Vatican tomorrow. We went to another one of these seven pilgrimage churches. Uh, the Basilica of St. Mary Major, which is really in the heart of Rome, really close to the train station here. visiting that church we then walked about another 20 minutes 
north north east towards uh, St. Mary of Victory, which is known for, it's a very small church, but it is known for Bernini's masterpiece, The Ecstasy of Teresa. I don't know if it was the timing, but as the sun was coming in, it just yeah. lit up. I don't know if we just got lucky, but it was beautiful. You may also know that church from the movie and book, um, Angels and Demons. I've read the book, love the movie, and, and it was, it was fun to just walk in and see like, oh, this was in a scene of a movie. We are back at our Airbnb. After all that walking, after all that sightseeing, it was time for gelato. And just five minutes down the road from St. Mary of Victory is La Romana. A gelato place that we had heard great, great things about and it absolutely lived up to that hype. It, um, one unique thing about this place is when you pick your cone, before you even pick your flavors, flavors of gelato, they ask you what kind of chocolate you want in the bottom of your cone, which is an awesome, yeah. unique addition. So yeah. We both picked just regular chocolate, but I think they had white chocolate. Yeah. Well, it was so overwhelming, like when you walked in and I would I would say my my only tip for this would just be like if you can look up the flavor we I haven't even checked but if you can look up the menu or check the flavors of kind of what you're interested in because I feel like most places we've been to have an English um, like section and I, this one didn't which is totally fine it just it kind of caught us by surprise and, and it was a little overwhelming because I was like I felt like I needed to just like pick one and hurry and. <laughs> I really would have loved to have been like, what's that? What's that? But I didn't want to be that person just holding up the line. And so I think my only tip would be like, try to look up what you might be interested in. I don't think it's, I mean, I think it's totally fine if you want to ask the people there, but it just felt like I needed to just pick something, which you cannot go wrong with gelato no. here. I mean, that's, that's the good thing is that you can't go wrong with and anything you pick. We don't have any real video because by the time we sat down, you will see in the photo, <laughs> My gelato was halfway off. Like, thankfully, Lauren <laughs> caught it falling off my yes. cone. Um, but one thing too is they just add whipped cream to your yeah. gelato, so definitely do that. And they have different kinds of whipped cream too that they will add to the top. So, um, it La Romana is another place. It's not in the heart of the city. It's kind of on the outskirts in different parts. You kind of have to want to get there. But, but you know, it's if worth you're going to go to St. Mary of Victory, or you're, it's not too far from the Vatican either. There's other places where it's located, but highly recommend. At all the churches here, you have to have your shoulders and your knees covered. And I already knew that, but today I was just wearing shorts, this shirt, and um, but I brought a scarf with me to kind of just tie around me to cover my knees because I wasn't sure we didn't have like foolproof plans so we weren't sure what we were gonna do but I just wanted to be prepared so I wanted to give out that tip where because I mean we're here in May but I know it just gets hotter and hotter in June and July and I feel like you know you're not gonna want to walk around in pants if you don't have to so I think and they're so they sell scarves and um, you know things that you can tie around your waist to kind of make a skirt or something like that just so when you go into the churches and respect all the rules, I mean, we definitely want to do that. And we came back to the Airbnb and I had always heard of this place called Tonarello. One of the things about Rome is that they're, we, they invented carbonara. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was, I was on the hunt for that. So I, I had heard this place had really good carbonara. So we went and there's a long line, um, which I had read on their website, like they do, have reservations but I'm just gonna tell you now like if you uh, if you're if you're interested like I mean I, I don't know how far you can book out but book out you know if you know you want to go there definitely try to get it but otherwise they just have kind of a line that lines up against the alleyway and I luckily we did not have to stand in line very long it was a long line but the uh, I guess the hostess or the manager came by and was offering people to, if you wanted to sit inside. And yeah, apparently everybody that was in this line wanted to sit outside, which sit outside. I mean, if you're here in this area, like you definitely want to sit outside as much as you can. Like it's just a great way to people watch, but, but, but the inside is huge. Yes, which I did not realize. And, 
at that point, I was just like, well, I mean, we could just go and sit inside and we just could go. Just carbonara. Yeah. So we got sat right away, which is great. So, so little tip, if you don't, if you, if you do not have your heart set on and sitting you just outside. Want carbonara. Yeah. Just, uh, the, you know, you could even walk up to one of, you know, walk in there and they ask have them. A, they have a hostess desk. Just yes. go up and tell them that you would take the first available. Yeah. And so we didn't really know. But anyway, so we didn't have to stand in line. So I don't know how long the line actually took, but it's a pretty big place. And I don't think, you know, don't let a long line scare you away. Um, so anyway, we got sat and then... Um, we ordered bruschetta we did not we didn't bring our camera because we just didn't know how loud it was going to be and we missed the video opportunity of filming me eating anchovies which i think is for the first time and uh, it was definitely different it was a little fishy smell but Salty. i mean yeah but i'm glad i tried it one thing that threw me off was when i when we ordered the bruschetta i was expecting like little like yes cracker side <laughs> yeah like pieces of appetizer bread. side yeah like <laughs> no it was like a full loaf yes Eat, all three of them were just huge yes um, um so <laughs> big yeah starters. so so just tip there as well like i i don't know about the other appetizers but what we ordered it was definitely enough for us to split and it was wonderful yeah um and so then we ordered the house wine which was wonderful it comes in this cute little like non-labeled bottle Your which carafe. made it which made it just feel even that much better and then um we got so we got carbonara and it was wonderful i couldn't even eat all of mine I, we had to eat some I, of it most I, of it <laughs> Yes, I <laughs> ate all of mine and then part of hers. Yes. Well, I also ordered dessert because tiramisu is my favorite dessert and I have to try it everywhere we go. And it was, so, and it was, it was wonderful. Really good. So, yeah, so we talked about like going somewhere else to kind of just hang out and get a drink, but then we quickly realized that we had, we walked for like eight and a half hours today and we walked over 11 miles, almost 25,000 steps. So, my feet hurt. We're pretty exhausted, yeah. and we have an early morning tomorrow. Yeah, you know, it's been a long day. I think the highlight of my day has absolutely been the Coliseum. I feel like when we first arrived to the Coliseum, um, the Coliseum kind of like demands your attention. It reminds me of the first time I saw the Grand Tetons, and I know I've not, I've not been a ton of places around the world, but I remember every time I would be driving or walking around, Jackson Hole, my attention, my eyes were always drawn to the Grand Tetons. And same here, when you get to the Coliseum, it's just magnificence just demands your attention. You can't take your eyes off of it. And then when you get inside, when you start hearing the stories and the history behind it, it definitely lives up to that to that name and as a wonder of the world and yeah, all that so definitely definitely a highlight of the day and we'll definitely be up there on a highlight of this entire trip oh no yeah doubt. definitely but lauren's right it's been a long day i'm exhausted yes um and we've got and i'm and i'm sure uh we also uh I, I had to figure out the laundry situation and that was yeah. that was a task in itself so I'm currently trying to figure out how we're gonna wash our clothes because everything's in Italian. But thankfully, Google Translate has this awesome camera option that if you bring up the camera option and you put it on there, it'll say, it'll like translate it to English. So like for example, hygiene, that's an English word. And then the, the word below it is actually shirts. And in my camera, you'll see, or in my view, it'll actually show the English word. So that's kind of cool. So now I'm just trying to figure out exactly. Let's see. I think I've got it figured out. So you put laundry detergent here. If you have fabric softener, it goes there. And then I think that is either bleach or if you wanted to do I feel like you could put more detergent in there and I can't remember why, I don't know. It doesn't matter, I don't need to worry about that. And then once I put that in there, I'm gonna turn it to mix 40 because you can do cotton and synthetics or you can mix them both. And I'm just gonna mix it and hope for the best. And then I think I just press this button and I think everything will automatically work. 
like just it'll it'll go to the desired thing so we're gonna let's test it out here and it said in the video for like a normal load Woo! I don't know. See, in the YouTube video, in the YouTube video, it was dry detergent. We're just gonna go with that. That that seems like a good amount. So hopefully they smell okay. All our clothes are clean and nothing happened to them. I think we're gonna call it an early night tonight. Get ready for another day tomorrow. Yes, because tomorrow we're going to the Vatican. Cannot wait. I'm very excited. I feel like it's gonna be information overload, but in a good way, so. Yeah. Um, well, with that, I think I'm going to bed. Yeah, me too. <laughs>